Today I'm going to explain how to use version control in Coda. First let's create a new site, name it wherever you want, fill out any necessary information. Here's when it gets important, when you get to local root, this needs to be set because this is where your git repository will be located. Uh, find a unique destination. You can create a new folder. Alright, next we will, you can fill out terminal database, whatever you need, but the important part is click on the source tab and do clone get repository. So your administrator should give you the URL and if that you if that has a password you will be told a password. I'm gonna be using Bitbucket. If you're using a Bitbucket um, URL the password will be your account password. Okay. Um, under here, click the origin. Make sure the branch is on master. And then click save. So when you go into this new site, um, you can see this index and this readme weren't, weren't here before. That This was a brand new directory and contains what that repository held. I did not create these just now. I created these few days ago. So if this is a huge project, you'll see this empty directory turn into your huge project. Let's say we want to add a file. You, cre you create your file, let's call it main CSS. So I'm going to add some styles here. I'm going to save the file. And if you go to the SCM tab, you'll see that main CSS is now on this side. You don't have to do, to do anything yet because um, right now what we need to do is add that file to our HTML and we'll save that too and you'll also eventually see that that was added as well. So now we've made a major change. We've added some styles to our index and we've also created a new file. So a new file. You'll see it looks like this with the question marks and then this has an M for modified. So we'll add both and then the next thing you'll see is commit but don't use these to commit. Go down here and do commit all changes and then provide a brief message with what your changes are. Hit commit and you'll see these disappear. Next thing you'll do is we need to merge these changes with any other changes that were made by anyone else. So we're going to go down here to pull and, do a, and you're going to select the only option in there which is origin. And then now if there were um, any changes made by anyone else we would have seen them. And then we'll push. Your code now becomes retrievable by everyone else working on the project. Next, we're going, I'm going to explain what happens when there is a merging error. So right now, I am creating a second user. Uh, this will mean that there will be two users working on the same project at the same time. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate what, what happens uh, when you are working like this. Um, this is really where Git uh, shines the most. So we are going to create merging error. So I'm going to do this by, on both users, I'm going to create a footer. But neither of these are going to push yet. So this one is going to have some footer. I'm going to save that. But I'm not going to commit yet. So here, this, here's user 1, here's user 2. User 2 added a footer. Hasn't, has not committed yet. Here's user 1. We'll add a similar footer, but will contain minor differences, which is going to cause 
merge conflict. So user one has this is user one's footer in the footer. And this one has some footer in the footer. Now no one has committed yet. So what I'm going to do now is user two is going to push his commits. Added a footer. So now he's going to pull, but since user one hasn't added a footer yet, he's not going to see that. And then he's going to push. And then user one, who just added a footer, is now going to do the same thing with the same message. Now, this is going to cause an error. We're going to pull. And git pull failed. And then it's going to show you master branch fetch head. You can ignore this. You just click OK. And then. So, Coda doesn't ha handle merge conflicts very well. Um, the best way to handle this is to close the file and reopen it. Um, Coda will give you an error saying that the file was changed externally. You, you always want to say revert file uh, because there's important um, information that has been changed. So click revert file. Okay, here is what git does. It puts in this information, head, some equal signs, and then this is a hash. So now user one has to deal with this. Some footer came from user two and user one still has his changes. So this is a small file, but if this was a huge file and had huge changes, it would be really hard to find out uh, you know what what happened here. We're going to delete the things that get put in here because we, we don't need them. We're going to save, add. Now we're going to compare with your last commit, which was added a footer. And it's going to open up a separate um, application here. So now this is going to show you on the left, this was originally what you had. And on the right, it's what user 2 put in. All of the highlighted stuff was what user 2 put in here. So this makes it a lot easier to find out like what, what went wrong, what happened. Um, so once we decide um, you know, if we even need user 2 stuff, or you know, what we can do to make them both work, you, you can then close this and then go back. You're going to fix your merging mistake if you do make a change, like let's say, or you're fixing the change, then then you'll add again, and then um, commit all changes. And then when you do that, put in merge conflict in the message, and so that will let, will let everyone know that there was a merging error and so if, if something's going wrong, uh, we, we know where to look. And then use the same message that you used before. Added a footer. That's, that's what I used before. So I'll, I'll use the same message and add merge conflict in parentheses. And then again, I'm going to pull. And there's a chance that another merging conflict will happen. Because if it took you a few minutes to do this, and then someone made made another change, which was another conflict here. Then you'll have to do it again, which would be unfortunate, but it happens. Um, next, we'll push to origin. Uh, before you push, you always want to pull. That's that's the main key to make sure that you're not people's code um, isn't being overwritten. Um, it's actually impossible to push code without pulling first. Git will give you an error if you try to do that. So that's one advantage of using Git is, is it is impossible to overwrite code changes. And so keep in mind that if you have multiple 
merging conflicts. You'll have to do that for each file. You'll have to go into to index, uh, compare changes, and then go into like every file that has a merging conflict and, and fix those conflicts. The best way to avoid merge conflicts is to have people work in specified places. That is how to use Git in Coda. Thank you.